Hi, I am Wim Martens, Relational AI. Let's get started right away. So being where you are, you probably already heard that SQL is great and that what goes around comes around. And that every decade or so, something happens that makes people believe that SQL is bad. It's old, it's awkward, it's slow on graphs, whatever. This generates a whole bunch of excitement and startups until SQL adopts the new features and then SQL is great again. Now, things have been going on like this for a while and it's been working great, uh, but it does always cause the SQL standard to grow. In a way, we first had Cod's paper, uh, then the first definition of SQL, SQL foundation, and the SQL standard today is 4,000 plus pages, and that's pretty large. So to put this in perspective, the C standard is defined in just 400 pages. And why is this? Why does SQL keep growing? Well, this is because SQL is designed to work as a sub-language inside a host programming language. SQL is not designed to do libraries. So if we want to give it new functionality, we cannot just write a library. The actual language needs to be extended. This led us to the question of whether we can design a language that's based on our tried and trusted database principles, namely being declarative and using the, using the relational model, so embracing the main ideas that SQL is built on, but we want to do full-fledged programming, including libraries. This would be cool to have because then the database engine with its query optimizer, it can see entire applications and can do optimization everywhere, not just over the database part of applications. Why is this good? Well, we want to solve the impedance mismatch problem. Um, when you build large and complex business applications, you are usually dealing with different programming paradigms that you are stitching together. One deals with the database and the other with the business logic of your application. Um, on the database side, you have your query language, which is declarative and in which you have all the nice stuff that you're learning about in your database courses, like uh, serious query optimization, automatic parallelization, and so on and so forth. Um, and in the host language, uh, which is usually an imperative general purpose language, you are writing code that is completely invisible to your query optimizer. So here you're on your own, right? Um, and we want to bring this together in one language and one programming paradigm. We want to simplify this situation for developers. So we came up with a language, RHEL, um, short for relation, and it's going to be presented at this year's CMOD. The starting point for RHEL is that you have data log rules with first order logic in the bodies. So you can define the parent relation based on mother and father, like in this piece of RHEL code. Um, this rule says that if somebody is a mother or a father, then they are also a parent. Uh, and since you have first order logic in the bodies, you can use quantifiers, exist and for all. Uh, this allows you to define grandparent based on parent using an existential or orphans using a for all. So, all right, you may be thinking that this looks like a logic course instead of a database course, but we know that SQL is built on first order logic, right? And we're going to add more features soon to, to facilitate programming. For instance, you can use conceptually infinite relations. So you can use the exact same syntax as before, but now with relations such as int, add, uh, multiply, and so on. So you can define the additive inverse of x to be the value y such that when you add x and y together, the result is zero. Or you can define an infinite relation, ab absolute, with all x, y such that y is the absolute value of x, and you can do it like this. And since rel is based on data log, you can use data log style recursion, defining ancestor using parent uh, like this. All right, so until now, we are squarely in the database query language world, right? How do we go beyond this? We will add four extra features, um, tuple variables, relation variables, relational application, and abstraction. Uh, I don't have the time to explain all these in detail, so I'll just gonna show you some code examples that use them and to give you an idea. So let's look at defining relational algebra as a library. So you know what Cartesian product, right? So you basically join everything with everything. Um, defining the Cartesian product of this relation u and v here, it works uh, in rel like this. So here I'm saying that product uv is the relation 
that has all the tuples A, B, C, D, such that A, B is in U and C, D is in V, right? But this code is not what you would really want, right? This is because this code is not generally applicable. Um, if V would be ternary, you would have to change the code to this, right? It would have to look like this. And this is why RHEL has so-called uh, tuple variables to make this code work, no matter what are the arities n of U and V, right? And here we are saying that the product of U and V is the set of tuples X, Y, now with dots, um, such that X is a tuple in U and Y is a tuple in V. Okay, so this is where we are now. But now if we would like to take the product between two relations A and B, we would have to write it like this, yeah? different names. Again, we don't want this. This is code duplication. Actually, we would like to compute the product of R and S like this, like an operator that works on arbitrary input relations. So here product is something like a function that takes relations R and S as input and it returns their Cartesian product. So to be able to do this, we need relation variables. Uh, in RHEL, you say that the product of two relations, A and B, is this set of tuples x dot dot dot, y dot dot dot, such that this x is a tuple in A and y is a tuple in B. Same as on the previous slide, but now you see that A and B are variables. Yeah? And that's it for Cartesian product. You can also do the rest of relational algebra, but I refer to the paper for that. Let's look at all pair shortest path. So we have a graph with vertices uh, V and edges E. Mm, the first rule here is saying that the shortest path from X to Y has length zero if X equals Y. Okay. And the second rule says that the shortest path from X to Y has length K if there is an out neighbor Z of X such that the shortest path from Z to Y has length K minus one. And then this last line in the code checks that there is no path from X to Y that's shorter than K. And that's what shortest path means, right? This is, this is declarative. And if you want, you can write this code more succinctly using uh, aggregation and abstraction. So here, this second rule, first rule is the same. Uh, the second rule says that the shortest path length from X to Y is the minimum value I, such that there is this out neighbor Z of X that has this path of length I minus one uh, to Y, like in the previous slide. Last example, I'm gonna do a simplified uh, page rank. So you can define general matrix multiplication in, in RHEL just like this. This is just one line of code. Right? And it looks very, very similar to how you would write matrix multiplication in mathematics. Okay, now I'm going to skip some boring preliminaries, like writing how many rows a matrix has or defining a vector of length d in which every entry is 1 over d, which you need to initialize page rank. But once you have these, you can write the page rank code again, just like how you would write it down mathematically. So the first line here says that if you do page rank for zero iterations, you just start with the initialized vector, the length of which is the number of rows in the matrix. And the second line says that for doing the kth iteration, you simply multiply your matrix for the graph G with the result of page rank after K minus one iterations. And that's it. So now you can do 10 iterations of page rank like this. Okay, yeah, I cannot explain the whole language in five minutes, but I can tell you how it's being used. So RHEL is already being used with customers for large applications and the customer base is growing fast. Um, in these applications, RHEL uh, models the semantics of the whole domain and it's replacing uh, arbitrary Java or C sharp code. And in doing so, we see that the code base can become 20 to 50 times smaller and that maybe surprisingly, uh, performance goes up. This is really because what I said in the beginning, right? Now the optimizer has a larger reach and it can speed things up beyond just the database component of the applications. So this optimization, um, uh, which is application wide, it can really work and this is making us very excited. Okay, that's it. If you're interested, you can learn more in the upcoming paper. Here is the QR code for archive version um, uploaded just a few days ago if you want to read more. Okay, thanks. Bye.